The biggest advantage of using a prefabricated space maintainer versus one you sent off to the lab is just, number one, what's best for the patient. So it's quick, it's easy, it requires one visit, the child's already numb, you place it in and you're done as opposed to sending it to a lab, coming back, and now going through the whole experience again and placing it in. Most of our patients, um, we do everything we can to make it an easy experience to start with, but they're nervous, they're little kids. They like to be here as few amount of uh, appointments as possible. And I'll tell you, moms appreciate that as well. Having one visit, much easier for them. Right when I came out of residency, and even during residency, we had used some of the prefabricated unilateral space maintainers. And when I got out into practice, I recognized in sedations and these difficult kids how hard it was. And so it went from being something that was something we used as an exception or in a difficult situation to standard of care. And I saw that the success rate was just as good with these as it was a lab fabricated space maintainer, which then I had the idea, why would we ever want to have patients come back for a second visit? My business partner now, he is a dual trained pediatric dentist and orthodontist. So when I first joined him, um, there was a little bit of a, a question of, hey, is this really the right thing to do? I think in his orthodontic mind, he's thinking, I need to do a fabricated one from the lab. And then as we slowly start, started to see cases that I did, and he began to quickly be converted to the efficiency and the effectiveness of a unilateral space maintainer. The tissue is as healthy, the, they stayed on just as well, and they did exactly the same thing for less time and an easier visit for the patient, which is really what we're here to do. Right after I finished residency, we were very used to using you know, custom, lab-fabricated space maintainers. And once I began using these, um, the de novos, Dr. Todd really introduced me to them. I'd used them a little bit before, but once we saw we could do them really well, um, I almost completely switched over. There's still times when we want a lab fabricated one, when we have a real asymmetric arch or a tooth is sticking out that we need to put it on, but they last every bit as long as the others. And once you become good at them, you can fabricate them and you can place them very quickly. While the child's numb, it's so much more ideal to put that in and the mom doesn't need to make an extra visit. So for us, that's just about everything we do. We probably do 98% de novos when it's a unilateral space maintainer. One of the questions that is asked um, is, is there a cost difference between a prefabricated versus a lab Space, lab fabricated space maintainer, and not only just the cost of the actual um, metal and the material, the other cost is to think about the amount of time it takes and another appointment. So you're dealing with impression material, assistant time, as well as the appointment where the patient comes back and you have another, another time to actually cement it in. So you've got multiple visits, plus just the staffing of tracking a lab piece and having it come back and, and just the whole process. It actually costs much more than just the actual physical pieces of the two metal. As for placement of a distal shoe using the de novo system, I use it completely and it's ideal. The only thing that I do differently with a, a distal shoe is I am certain to get a radiograph before I cement it or before I crimp it. So I place it um, and while it's sitting there and the shoe is going into the socket right next to the permanent molar that's coming up, we take a radiograph you know, just to confirm that it's in the right position. And if it is, then we go ahead and crimp it. The other thing I love about it is I can take that distal shoe and I can bend it a little bit this way or a little bit this way so I can get it right next to that molar and I've had them with no, absolutely no space loss. And as soon as the molar comes up enough, we can place either the band and loop or we may put in a bilateral space maintainer at that time. As far as at home, when I first placed these, you know, I wondered how well they would tolerate it. I have not had a child have any problem with these, including infection, including discomfort. Uh, as soon as they heal well, they act as just perfect guide planes for the permanent molar to come in. And as far as taking them out, you might think you need to anesthetize, and generally we don't anesthetize. If we have a child who's really worried, 
We'll have them, you know, have just some very local anesthetic. But again, you know, I don't remember the last time I anesthetized when I took out one of these distal shoes. They heal up just fabulously.